Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we have a great uh, panelist and uh, quite interesting topic today. Uh, how to use digital uh, technologies to enhance our lives, our businesses, through digital transformation. Um, I had some papers prepared and then I realized it's, it's not uh, digitalized enough. So I will use my mobile for the beginning. Um, the idea of this panel is actually to, to have different stories from different panelists, different countries and different companies. They, uh, they will explain in a few minutes, up to 10 minutes, what exactly their companies and their countries achieved so far in the era of digital transformation. And after that, we will have some open discussion based on questions that we sort of prepared, but uh, you can always ask more questions if, if uh, the, the time uh, allows us. Um, the first uh, panelist that um, I would like to uh, introduce to you is the lady, ladies first. Uh, this is Aya Mukanova from Kazakhstan. She is heading international cooperation uh, department uh, in a company called Zerde. It's actually a holding company that is working for the government. Um, uh, and um, all, I will introduce all the others immediately and then I will give you the, the time to speak. Um, with us is also Marek Slachik from uh, PPF. He is co uh, chief commercial officer of PPF. Uh, I'm sure you know that uh, they recently acquired Telenor Serbia. So he will talk a little bit more about uh, digital um, uh, usage of digital technology in telco industry. Uh, with us is also uh, um, Martin Zabo from uh, his from subcontracting company of uh, Post Office Slovakia. He has his own story, how they support their post office to digitalize their uh, traditional services. And uh, the last but not the least is uh, representative of Telecom Serbia. I am privileged uh, because this is my own uh, line manager, uh, director of uh, IT planning and uh, digital transformation sector uh, within IT and ICT division of Telecom Serbia. Uh, let's start with Aya, because Aya have some interesting story to share about something called digital program uh, that started uh, two years ago, Aya. Yeah, it Am started in 2017. Okay. Can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about what was the aim of the program, who actually initiated the program? And what, uh, what are the achievements so far? And maybe a little bit more about the further strategy of this program. Yes, sure. First of all, I'd like to greet all guests and colleagues, organizers for the Digital Serbian Week. I'm honored to be here. Um, I'm honored to on, uh, greet on behalf of the Zerde National Info Communication Holding. First of all, I'd like to say that some background about our company. Uh, the National Info Communication Holding in one of the largest Kazakhstani state company created for the development uh, the modern info communication technologies. Holding was established in July 2008 in accordance with the government resolution of the Republic of Kazakhstan. So, uh, as you know, the technologies almost today all countries use digital technologies. They used for increase their labor productivity, improve quality of life and social life of the population. At the same time, countries mainly use digital technologies for certain areas of activity. Kazakhstan, one of that countries. Uh, they, we work on the complex systems and full-scale national digitalization programs. The head of our state, ex-president Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, set a goal to modernize the economy and enter to the top 30 developed countries. 
So Digital Kazakhstan, it is a governmental program, was adopted after studying the experience of advanced countries in digitalization of national economies. The program consists of five main areas, human capital development, creating an innovative ecosystem, implementing digital skill, silk road, transition to a digital government, digitalization of economic sector. These areas include 17 initiatives, 120 projects, and they are implemented by the ministries, government agencies, and organizations. Digitalization offices were formed for effective implementation of that program. There are 18 offices in the central government authorities and seven uh, in local executive authorities with appointment of responsible persons at the level of deputy CAOs. Similar digitalization offices are also available in quasi-public sector companies. In coordination with the head of the state, the five digital vice ministers were additionally appointed for successful and high quality implementation of measures for digitalization in social areas, such as healthcare, education, social protection of the population, customs and taxation. And I can take a look closer on each of this area. As I said, one of the main goal of the digital program is develop the innovative ecosystem. So the past few years, there was a significant area creating innovative ecosystem. We adopted the law on venture financing with the framework of which the norms on the venture investments were determined and conditions were created to simplify the visa and labor regime for foreign participants of Astana Hub. Tax preferences for the participants of the technology park in the form of simplified taxations were also accepted. As part of Astana Hub activities, there are three acceleration programs were implemented in 2018, as a result of which six incubation selections were conducted, 150 incubation projects selected, and 47 startups were released. More than 200 events were held at the, this Astana Hub, and there are participated more than 11 participant visitors, 1,000 visitors. There are investments in domestic startup projects. In 2018, there was amounting to 480,000 US dollars. The prototyping laboratories and R&D centers of domestic and foreign IT companies in the following areas were placed on the basis of Astana Hub, such as Smart City, Industry 4.0, Big Data, Blockchain, AR, VR, the IoT technologies, hardware prototyping, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. This provides residents of Asana Hub with an opportunity to develop prototypes and engage in a research work. The second area, the second uh, direction of the program is implementation of digital Silk Road. The results of implementation of digital Silk Road areas as follows. The project providing broadband access to rural settlement of Republic of Kazakhstan based on fiber optic communication lines technology is being implemented within accelerating technological modernization of the economy and universal access to fiber optic infrastructure through the mechanism of public-private partnership. Today, the penetration rate of broadband access makes 79%. In 2018, 56 stations were connected, covering a population of over 144,000 people. For today, the total of 1,530 settlements with a population of 13.4 million people are connected. Also, work on the international project of TASIM, Trans-Eurasian Super Information Highway, is underway in order to create a fiber optic link connecting China, Southeast Asia, and Europe through the Caspian Sea, with a total length of more than 15,000 kilometers. Measures were started to test 5G, mobile communication of the fifth generation, Telecom operators began work in uh, Astana and Almaty cities and other regions of the Kazakhstan.
as well as attracting commercial data processing centers for the needs of civil defense and organizations. The communication channels between five uh, MCS and GEO server centers are organized. Next direction is transition to a digital state. We have uh, work on the public services. Now we, at the moment, we um, automated more than uh, 752 services. And, but our plan is to do them to have, uh, services delivery by 40% on average from 12 to 7 days. At the same time, 6.1 million paper turnover was reduced. The level of satisfaction of the population with the provision of services reached 85.7%. 30 million state services were rendered to the population in 2018 in electronic format. 8.4 million users are registered on the government portal. We have 89 public services can be obtained using mobile government application. At the same time, 1.3 million citizens are already users of the application. 3.6 million services were provided through mobile government only in 2018. 52 public services are available with a one-time password without using the electronic ID. Six public services are rendered according to one application principle, and three proactive services are provided to the public. As part of the work on provision of public services, digital PCs were opened in three cities. Uh, they, um, provide where you can receive electronic services, uh, undergo training the independently. The effect of automation of public services in 2018 amounted to 9.9 .9 million US dollars. Sorry, so, I, uh, we will need some more information from the others. Thank you so much. So, so detailed uh, information from your country. It seems you really achieved a lot in only one year. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a, it's a really broad. Uh, this program actually uh, affects uh, the, the whole society. Yes. Uh, and finally, you... in conclusion, I would say the program has a lot of benefits to our country, to the population, to the whole society. How much did you? I mean, your company. How big influence your company actually had to this? To, to develop the strategy of this program, or it was just uh, given to you to, to realize? Zerdea, um, uh, it is a government company. So all the strategy is uh, interconnected with the strategy of the, our government. So uh, one of the main directions of the, um, our company is very outlined in the digital program. So that's why we were the one of the implementer and developer of the program. Okay, and how many stakeholders actually uh, you, you can recognize in this uh, project? It's a huge project. As well, it's a program with uh, so many projects involved. Yeah, there are more than 120 projects. Right. So there, there are more than like 200 stakeholders involved. So in it's that. actually an ecosystem of the stakeholders. It's a big ecosystem. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, um, according to this story, um, um, Martin also has maybe not si similar story, but uh, you also work for some governmental company as a uh, um, subcontractor. I can imagine that this strategy is also uh, led by, uh, by uh, post office, but uh, run by, by your company. Can you please tell us a little bit more about mm -hmm. your role and your, your project? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to say very many thanks for the organizers to welcome me on this conference. And uh, as Mila says, I'm coming from Slovakia and actually the company who lives in one uh, apartment or house together with Slovak Post and actually what we are doing during the last 11 years is that we are trying to help Slovak Post to, to be, let's say, more competitive, more sexy and better well positioned to really be a commercial organization. 
the fact of life is that the postal business in uh, the recent years is, is going down. So we all of us know that uh, postal parcels, letters are not sent anymore. And uh, all these guys from telco companies are, of course, uh, taking business, uh, traditional postal business, which was really the letter business. And, uh, and the same is doing the government. So the government is another threat for the Slovak post where uh, uh, the e-government decisions are taken every single day. And um, in this context, again, the post was losing its business, traditional business in the communication between the cities and, and, uh, and, uh, and the government. Uh, the commercial sector is going down with the volumes of the mail. It's the same situation. So, so the Slovak post needs to had a strategy to, to reflect these changes in the environment and in order to not ask more and more money, to subsidize uh, money for their existence. And that's the reason why 11 years ago we have started with the Slovak Post, the project uh, which reformed the complete post operation in order to reflect the citizen and the customer needs and really reflect the changes on the market. The recent developments in the postal business is that not just the latter business, but also the parcel business is uh, under critical threat uh, because companies like Alibaba or Amazon are changing their strategies and really delivering parcels outside of the delivery postal networks or logistics networks. And also the, the post needs to reflect to this. Um, of course, uh, another threat for the post is the really request from modern customer to have everything now and online. And as you can imagine, also the Serbian post and also the Slovak post uh, 10, 15 years ago was really dirty, shadow, brick and mortar, old style, old fashioned, not professional, not delivering. I mean, the, the organization you, you do want to really cooperate with um, that has changed in Slovakia. It's, uh, I have seen uh, some changes also on the Serbian market that Post is trying to be more customer oriented and uh, uh, coming with the new services. Uh, on the other hand, uh, what we did is that basically we, we started with the, we, we the protection of the core business, uh, which is the mail and parcel business, and then try to direct the Post to the partnerships. So we started with the the great partnership with the commercial bank, mobile operator, insurance company. And in the last seven to eight years, we, we established a really fruitful uh, cooperation with the government. And that's the, exactly the topic I would like to stress today is that really the post could become the trusted partner of the orga organizations on the governmental level, which could really help government to enroll the electronic services. And uh, what happened uh, uh, with the Slovak post and they their position, they shifted from the really brick and mortal parcel letter paper ink organization to electronic organization in the number of steps. The initial step was that government decided to go electronics, same stuff like your prime minister doing here very well uh, with the electronic services. Uh, Slovak Post has recognized there are at least two generations of uh, citizens who are not willing or not willing to know or they don't believe electronic services or they are not able to cope with them. So the so Slovak Post assist with the, with the business services, assist those citizens to get those services now and not wait until the two generations will die and the newcomers, the new generations will come. So uh, this is the one business line which we created with, uh, with the government. And another is that uh, the, the government really have a strict rule today that all the electronic communication to citizens and businesses is going just electronic. This was uh, launched last year. Basically, that is great uh, news for all the mobile operators and companies involved in electronic business. On the other hand, government uh, cannot forget about its role uh, to serve all the citizens and again the post, gain the, gain the role in the electronic delivery and in the both directions. So it means that it receives electronic data from the, all the government organizations and delivering it electronically to already uh, enrolled uh, citizens and businesses 
On the other hand, if you are not already enrolled, if you are not with the government yet, e-government yet, you are getting those messages converted from electronic to paper and get it home. And you are kindly asked to really join the e-government in order to be uh, online and reduce again the costs. So this is happening in Slovakia uh, between the post and, uh, and, uh, and the government. Another great project which did the post for the Slovak country and also helped the government a lot was that uh, post is basically getting euro to collect all the payments from uh, citizens for various services. So again, the, the government in all these cases, whether it's communication, whether it's, it's for front office for, for governmental services in the postal offices, or it's, it's a collection of the fees, in all these services, government as a uh, just leverage state-owned organization, which is already paying its premises across the country, which is leveraging its trust because the, really the customer and the citizen really trust still the, the post, uh, postal people. And basically this is the way how the government leveraged the existing infrastructure and also allowed the post not to ask for the money from the government budget, you know, uh, but allow them to make the money and charge customer or citizen for the convenience. So I think this is the good story, and I, I, we are looking for the, the similar cases around, and I know also the Czech Republic did a lot uh, uh, in this progress regarding the electronic services and distribution of the outputs via the, the postal offices, and, and we think that we need to go really further with the post. And uh, before I will just finish my introduction, I just want to say that uh, the, what is just coming to the Slovak Post and the government cooperation, the new element, is the electronic identity. Um, as a company which was uh, fully involved in the number of European projects for electronic documents issuing, so issuing of passports, electronic IDs, vehicle registration cards, driving licenses, it's clear that it's, it's old school, it's already it's already something what was overcome by the new technology and in this stage we see the great opportunity for the post to be the issuer of electronic identity for the citizens and I think uh, this is something what could really again create new revenues for the post and really unlock the e-government story for the citizens and voters. So I think that's a short, short story. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, both of you mentioned um, a public-private partnership and partnership itself. Um, I would uh, now um, move towards telcos. We have two representatives, uh, representatives of regional uh, telco players. Um, uh, actually, Marek, you are coming from PPF, but you spent some time working also in Serbia um, several years ago. Uh, as a CMO of Telenor, so you know our uh, market pretty well. Uh, also now as a Chief Commercial Officer from uh, Czech Republic, you're also looking after all this region. Uh, I can imagine that uh, you are the best uh, person to be asked about trends in the region, in digitalization and digital transformation, and uh, how actually uh, PPF and your daughter companies are willing to, to use new uh, digital uh, technologies to serve customer, new customers' needs, new requirements for the market and, and the customer experience. Can you please um, <coughs> tell us your story about digital transformation? Thank you. Um, I think it's an extremely broad question uh, and we could spend a lot of time discussing different angles into digital transformation. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to, uh, to not only work in the Czech Republic, but I spent three years in Serbia, then I spent three years in Denmark, then I was, uh, also had a chance to live uh, for some time in, in, in Sweden or Russia, or uh, had experience uh, markets in, in Asia. Uh, so I really have to say that uh, the digital transformation is the global theme for societies. It's the theme for governments, it's the fee for, for consumers, and obviously it's the theme for industry, 
how to change the way we live, how to change the way we interact, and how to change the way we uh, run the business. Uh, I, I think uh, that uh, the telco sector has a very important role in that. And I think it's been said many times, uh, and I will probably repeat something which will not be new to any, of, any one of you, but the telcos of the world uh, have uh, uh, and will have uh, a key role in the digital transformation and the digital uh, movement of societies in a way of connecting and providing infrastructure for that. Uh, without reliable um, quality, uh, fast uh, and uh, widely available telco infrastructure, no matter if it's, if it's a fixed line or if it's a mobile connection, the digital transformation simply doesn't work. And I think we need to assume that responsibility and play that role extremely actively. Uh, uh, we sometimes like to say that we are a little bit in the hands of the government to move into the next cycle of the, of the, um, uh, you know, the technological evolution. But I think we need to drive that development ourselves uh, very responsibly and aggressively forward. Uh, and it's funny because we are supposed to be the driving force and at the same time we are challenged ourselves in terms of how do we transform our internal way of work. So this is also a bit of a bit of a dilemma. For me, the reflections uh, on the region, the differences are actually not that huge. Yes, Czech Republic, uh, which is the country that I come from, is uh, a bit more advanced in terms of, you know, smartphone penetrations and use of e-government uh, services, you know, general digital literacy of uh, people living out there. But I see that uh, countries like Serbia or the neighboring Bulgaria or um, Hungary on the north of uh, Serbia, which are belonging to our portfolio together with Slovakia, they are very fast uh, developing towards the digital literacy and use of uh, digital services. Still, I would criticize ourselves in the region. I don't believe that we have set the ambition level high enough. I don't personally believe that we are fast enough in developing these types of things. You know, if you go to if you go to uh, Singapore or if you go to Oslo, uh, uh, capital of Norway, or uh, even for that example, if you go to Moscow, uh, in in Russia. You, your ability to serve yourself in the different areas digitally through a smartphone is much more interesting than what you get experience in this region. I think the leaders of this region uh, have uh, perhaps overslept a little bit the, the urge to develop uh, the digital uh, ecosystem. And I would praise a little bit the, the current government of Serbia for putting that specific topic on top of their agenda. I think it's very important for Serbia to do that. And I'm, I'm very happy that we as a private owner uh, entering Serbian market uh, uh, by buying uh, Telenor can uh, actively uh, participate and contribute to that extremely important effort. That's this is, what this I want is great to, to hear. Um, again, <laughs> the last but not the least, but um, uh, thank you, Marek, for pointing that out. I think that um, Telecom Serbia, I hope, Misha, you would agree with me, uh, has one of the most important roles as a um, national leader in telco uh, in, in probably running or owning or delivering these kind of services that will enable digital transformation of Serbian market. Can you please elaborate a little, little bit more on, on <coughs> our ongoing projects that uh, yeah. I know you are, you are running? Uh, especially for government and maybe another customers as well. Okay, thank you, Mila. Uh, as you as you already know, uh, Telecom Serbia is uh, the largest uh, telco operator here here in Serbia. We are also present in neighboring countries, uh, uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina and and Montenegro as well. And we are uh, 
second largest player in those countries, fighting to be, trying to be number one in Montenegro. I hope it will be soon. And um, I agree with, with Marek uh, uh, that we are trying to, to, to uh, 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 create, digitally transform, not only ourselves, but we have uh, this special responsibility to, to uh, create uh, environment and uh, t technological environment uh, for digital transformation uh, of other, uh, other organizations of, uh, of the uh, uh, country and the society o o overall. Um, uh, telco, telco operators uh, 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 went through really uh, interesting and dynamic uh, times in the last 20, 25 years, and we had a lot of changes in, in, those, uh, in those years. Uh, uh, not only uh, changes in, 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 uh, in technology, but also changes in, in services that we are providing, also uh, changes in, in business models that we, that, that we uh, uh, use, and also the ch changes in skills that, that we need. Uh, and I think that all those, all those uh, changes are very important and uh, uh, created uh, telco operators as, as someone who can uh, help others in the uh, process of uh, digital transformation. Uh, we are playing in, in highly di digital environment and we created uh, 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 ground, uh, solid ground for disruption of our own business with, 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 with enablement of internet. Uh, we, we started to fight with, uh, with, uh, with compete with uh, uh, over the top players like uh, Skype, uh, Google, uh, Netflix, uh, Viber, WhatsApp, and, 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 and so on. And uh, so we, we, we realized that we have to change and we have to, to transform our, 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 way, our way of doing business in order to, in order to survive on, on this uh, dynamic market. Uh, so this uh, highly, uh, highly uh, digital environment uh, uh, there, are, there are actually four characteristics of, of, of it. Uh, uh, high, degree, high degree of uh, changes, uh, high degree of uh, uh, innovation, high degree of business uh, transformation, and um, it is also technology, technology intensive. And that is something that, that uh, defined us as someone who, who can help uh, others in uh, digital transformation journey. And I would say, uh, we can be uh, uh, some sort of uh, platform for digital transformation of, of other organizations, not only, not only on us. So uh, I think uh, it's, it's not easy to, 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 to be in telcos today, but it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. A lot of changes and a lot of opportunities to work in some, 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 other, some other areas. Um, I would uh, try to now to, to have a, a little bit of discussion. Mm -hmm. We heard four different stories, but they have some common uh, also uh, uh, things that all of you mentioned. Um, like somebody needs to make decision to make a strategic goal. Somebody needs to uh, initiate. Somebody else needs to drive. Somebody else needs to implement. In your opinion, who actually owns the decision and who drives and who implements? I mean, depends on the project, but if we talk about digital transformation uh, that will have soci help society plus businesses, uh, if I understood you well, uh, Mark, you mentioned that you would expect the government, uh, talking about Serbia, to actually give this goal to be faster in digital transformation for all of us? No, I would say <clears throat> I don't want to blame or point at the government as the only uh, one responsible because obviously we live in the free market where everyone participates in winning or losing, uh, also in this particular domain. But I would believe that the countries like Serbia have an excellent opportunity to actually use the digital transformation as a fantastic acceleration of uh, and actually own country differentiation uh, and, you know, in, 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 comparison, in comparison with the others. If I look at Serbia, Serbia has one of the highest number of qualified engineers per capita 
if, if not the highest one in Europe. There's the highest number of uh, IT freelancers working for the companies abroad. I think Serbia has fantastic opportunity to take advantage of this, of this skill set, of this workforce, and turn that into a digital nation. Uh, and I think that ambition has to be obviously uh, very clearly articulated as an ambition of the leadership. Uh, and I think it is now, which is, which is good. And then uh, creating environment for the participants in the game to, uh, to drive that um, at the pace which is faster, by definition, than uh, any other competing uh, country in, 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 this, uh, in this region. Uh, and I would really encourage uh, you know, Serbia to do it. And we would like to obviously participate on this race because that will give us the opportunity to show how we can contribute, how we can develop, and how we can uh, also drive uh, our part of this, uh, of this exciting uh, ambition. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is more like orchestrating role, actually, for, uh, for the whole picture. I mean, uh, you call it or orchestrating. I said you need to set the ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's always a role of any leader, either in a company or in the government. The ambition has to be clearly articulated. And then uh, you create the environment and make sure that everyone plays uh, 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 you know, uh, around those rules uh, and regulate uh, I I what needs to be regulated and give space uh, when the space is needed for the companies to, to thrive uh, on this journey. Uh, I, I think it's a f very exciting idea. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Uh, for um, Aya from Kazakhstan and from uh, uh, Martin, the question in your uh, specific program and projects, um, which kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know how to say, which kind of obstacles, which kind of barriers you, you would uh, um, actually um, maybe mention here. I'm sure that there are some barriers and some risks and some kind of problems, either to engage stakeholders or uh, maybe to get uh, uh, power to, to change things. Because transformation means really rethinking the business. It's not just uh, going digital, going paperless. It's actually changing the business model, changing the way of business, uh, giving opportunity uh, for new, innovative, creative businesses, you accelerating programs, you mentioned you have three of them, yes? Is probably the way how you, you manage to somehow overcome this obstacles. Yes, there are various, one of them, cultural change. Mm -hmm. yeah, digital process is not that easy and, the, and we can talk about it many hours, but the main barrier is the cultural change mm -hmm. of the society of the organizations. The digitalization is the main topic, main goal you know, of most of the organizations now. Mm -hmm. And for the previous question, I would like to add, there should be a mutual cooperation, not only govern, government should be initiative, there should be a business also mm -hmm. should cooperate in this process. Mm -hmm. As for Kazakhstan experience, the government was the initiator of the digitalization process in the country. And we have a good experience. We um, give an opportunity to all IT companies now. Mm -hmm. They provide their solutions for the all projects in the program. The public sector, uh, private sector, I mean, they provide their own solution, local companies in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. And we had such experience, we traveled to Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, some of our neighbor countries to uh, present our local products, our local IT um, companies products for other countries. So as today we discussed with the minister, mm -hmm. we would like to also come to mm -hmm. Serbia to show our products. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Martin, you mentioned trust, um, uh, trust of postal office, and um, if I, um, I would like to ask you, do you believe that this trust is very important when some, something transformational needs to be done? And this is probably why this could be epicenter in, in your case 
of the of the initiation of transformation and then all of you together within the ecosystem uh, your company's private uh, ICT company if I understood you well yes so all of you are actually around this epicenter of trust first of all then customer will accept easier or maybe you promote differently uh, new services <clears throat> what what would make the the change uh, trust plus promotion or what is more important in your opinion of course I mean really the the key message here is not to be lazy and really do things uh, every day and not to be trapped in the chicken egg problem and this is in the context of electronic identity and electronic services because on one hand you need to have a trusted issued electronic identity which could be not just used to log in into your mailbox or to Facebook account but it needs to be leverage also for signing contract with the mobile operator via web or signing a contract with the, with the bank for uh, your consumer loan so I think on one hand it's really the, the people are trapped in, uh, in this that yes I will do my electronic identity one day as a government please do the services and on the services side you co the commercial sector and the government say yes, yes we will wait for the identity and then we will issue the electronic services and this is the same situation all over the countries around the globe i mean the, the mainly in europe germany italy as a as a first countries with electronic id 12 13 years ago they have been issuing electronic id and it was not leveraged uh, on the market people have been not using it for contracting for example commercial organizations via the web so really do something and not to wait for other half because otherwise it will not happen because the citizens and mainly the customers because 90 percent of electronic traffic is not with the citizens but the, with the consumers which means the same people mm -hmm. but different thinking because they are willing to buy something mm -hmm. to get the service not just to be served by the government which is by accident of course 10 percent so really the message here is that i think the barrier is really the people are waiting for something but it's not that is not coming alone <laughs> so if there will be not service available citizen will be not or customer will be not driven to 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 get the new id electronic id so i think the both the government and commercial need to really enroll the services and in the same time proceed with electronic identity I, electronic identities is today issued by the commercial organizations or just the global players but most of those identities are not enough trustful. I'm coming back to the Mila words is that it's about the trust because most of the accounts you are using, whether they are registered to your name or, or to the Lucky Rabbit 007 <laughs> years uh, within, within Facebook, those are, most of them are not possible legally to use according to the laws in the country for enrollment for the real services. And I think that's the chicken and the problem which needs to be observed and uh, faced by both in the same time and not wait wait for anything otherwise it will not happen that the transformation will not happen just by accident or by just the leader it's not just uh, to wait for somebody who will just decide yes we are government of serbia and we decided to go left or right that okay. will not happen people will decide that they will create demand for the electronic identity for the services once it is there once it is not no demand no business and no transformation. Yeah, I, I, I also, uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I would like to add, uh, well, uh, I think there are three, three common mistakes and three uh, 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 risks that are actually uh, following every uh, digital transformation uh, journey. Uh, uh, first, first one is uh, uh, lack of uh, clear digital vision. If you don't know where do you want to go, you will probably end up there, nowhere. Uh, you have to communicate and to, to, to all uh, uh, stakeholders be aware what we are trying to, to, to achieve with, with digital transformation. Second, second risk is uh, actually uh, overemphasis on, on, on technology. Technology is important, but it is not, uh, this is not technology, digital transformation is not a technology thing. Technology is only enabler. Digital, the digital transformation is about people and processes people and processes mm -hmm. uh, and the third, th third thing is uh, uh, too rigid operating model you have to change the operating model uh, uh, in the process of, of digital transformation you have to change 
uh, how how do you how do you do your business? How do you do your regular like regular things? So, so those are three common uh, mistakes, two three common risks that that follow every digital transformation project. Mm -hmm. uh, within uh, uh, your telco company, um, who is the owner of of this digital transformation? For example. Customer experience management project is one of those. Who owns the project and who runs the project? And I why? Mean, uh, there, are, there are many examples of these uh, digital transformation projects uh, uh, with, within the companies that we operate in the region, but it is always uh, the management team with the CEO at the helm. I mean, I cannot picture a different setup that this transformation would somehow happen on its own from within because you need to have uh, someone driving it. Transformation is, by definition, a change uh, driving activity. Uh, so that change has to be driven. You need, you need to define your current state and you need to define your future state and you need to agree on what you want to achieve with that change. Uh, so it is always the CEO who needs to drive mm -hmm. that. So top management actually it's the top management, is, yes. is, uh, is the most important. Also how would you uh, help your team to accept, okay, stakeholder, if it is, uh, if it is top down decision, it's probably easier uh, to, to have buy-in from the stakeholders. But how team, uh, which kind of uh, uh, problems, various issues you have with the team, accepting that process is actually changed? Because uh, digital transformation uh, also uh, requests uh, uh, change of the process within the company to be able to serve uh, different uh, external requirements. Do you agree with me? I mean, Just, maybe you don't agree. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, my experience uh, uh, with the digital transformation, and I was running back in 2015 a huge digital transformation of a Telenor company in Denmark. Uh, I think what we have done, we have put a very concrete example how this company is going to work and operate in uh, the future when this digital transformation is completed. Uh, and I think it was important for the people, for, for the stakeholders, for uh, the management team, uh, and for every single employee, including the uh, operators in the call center or the, the salespeople in the retail, to understand what is it that we are going to get after we successfully complete this transformation. Mm -hmm. Uh, in our case, it was a simple idea of one screen. We said, we don't want to have a computer screen for the sales guy in retail. We don't want to have a separate screen for the guy in, in call center and a separate screen for the guy in, uh, for our customer. We actually want uh, the same environment for everyone because this is going to change uh, the way we interact together. And this very simple idea has brought everyone to us to one page and uh, helped us to drive this transformation very fast through. So my advice is set the bold ambition and make it very simple to understand for people what are you trying to do. Otherwise, you will lose people on the way. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Yes, and it's again culture change. Yeah. It's again culture change. Uh, um, if we can uh, try to summarize, and I will also ask audience if they have some more questions. Of course, if you have questions, you can, you can ask. Is there any question? No. Uh, can we say uh, that no matter either digital technology is to be uh, used in society or in business, we always need to have actually clear vision what we want to, what we wish to do, what we wish to achieve. It normally comes from top to down. And then to engage stakeholder and team by being very clear with the, with the vision, what we want to do and how to achieve that. Can we agree on that or somebody has some a little bit different? Is there, is there any disruption? Is it really so, so clear how 
transformation takes place. Or we have OTTs in place, we have uh, some other service uh, providers that are very, very digital. They are not doing this digitalization of the existing processes, but they come with amazing new, completely new ideas, and we have to run to actually to achieve similar uh, things. Maybe this is also good to have some kind of uh, view on disruptors in the, in the digital world. If I, if I may, I think we have almost created this idea that the digital transformation is a project and once we go through the project, it's all done and it's over and we are fine. <laughs> the problem is that the digital world is the disruptor on its own. <laughs> so the digital transformation never, never finishes. This is a never ending story which will continue over and over and over. So I think this, it's difficult to conclude on what's going to happen. Uh, you know. Actually, you gave a great uh, conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have something, uh, some other opinion? For example, uh, you know, for, for you, Martin, I have a question. From the postal side, I mean, you know, the post, postal organizations are traditional 15, 20, 25 years ago. That was the traditional communication channel where hey, you have been sending letters uh, or uh, facsimiles. And uh, today, I mean, uh, the disruptive is really the global market. In, in the postal business, the disruptors are really eBay, Alibaba mm -hmm. coming to the to the region and and not asking any questions <laughs> <laughs> just grabbing money and, and and making their business and uh i think uh we are not really uh, we not, it's not necessary really to, to to invent the wheel uh, as it was mentioned uh, you can look at on on, uh, on the chinese market or singapore and and they really see the models that uh, how the disruptors started somewhere and today they are here they are not mm -hmm. coming they are mm -hmm. already here so mm -hmm. i think uh, there are lessons uh, already uh, learned from them and we, we need to reflect to them and really create the business uh, with these guys because those are the drivers of the global business and they mm -hmm. are disrupting us mm -hmm. and uh, it's not important just to listen and see <laughs> them but really to, uh, to figure out the models how we can in electronic uh, world uh, cooperate with them and uh, and make money as a government or commercial organizations. But do you believe that we, we will need these physical post offices in electronic world? Good question. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yes, because the government in, in our experience in Slovakia is reducing the number of physical points for physical interaction with the, with the citizens. Because if you have distributed the, the different agendas to different offices with different opening hours, addresses, you are just in the mess of, uh, of traditional old world. And uh, where we see the trend in Slovakia is that the, 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 the citizen is willing to really interact physically on one point and to get more services on one point. And what happened after the introduction of the few uh, services like the commercial register, register of crimes, uh, and their outputs to the postal offices, what happened is that the traditional organization responsible for the agenda basically closed their offices because it was not necessary to operate them anymore. So I think what postal organizations can do is to accumulate the existing uh, services which are coming from different angles, from different organizations of within the government, and really to be trusted place which is already and which is already paid by the government. So we see this role as an accumulator, and also we see this role also from uh, the commercial sector, mainly from utilities, the gas, water, mainly companies are leveraging the existing trust and network of the, of the post organizations and accumulating more services which could be served locally. Whether it's just a signing of the contract or upgrade of the contract, it's important that they have a place on demand, locally, closer, and really uh, charge a case, not, 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 not to really operate the network of tens or hundreds of offices across the country. So I think the future of the post is that it will become a single universal point of physical interaction. And even if we are uh, now working on, uh, on the project with the electronic identity, 
be before the identity, electronic identity will be issued securely to you, you need to finally sign the last paper in ink that says, yes, this is the born certificate of my identity finally, and now I'm switching to the electronic world. So I think really the, 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 the post, uh, postal offices will become these universal places still uh, within the country. And uh, from the parcels point of view or e-commerce, the e-commerce is booming and uh, as we see the trends, uh, still there is a high demand for places where you could, in long opening hours, uh, in, in good financial, con con uh, uh, with good uh, payment methods, grab your package and, and really get your stuff easily, closer, faster. So again, that's the second business line which drives the the, the new wave where the postal offices will go. Thank you. We have a few more minutes, um, maybe five minutes, up to five minutes. So if I could ask you for the end to take one minute each and um, give us your personal opinion, which technology, digital technology, um, is in your opinion the most influential in your area of business? And what is the next step about this? Do you, uh, do you already plan to, to use this technology or is it just vision you have? Can we start now with okay. <laughs> Vish? Well, uh, th there are several new technologies, not very new actually, some of, some of those are present for, 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 for more, more, uh, a couple of dec decades. But they are mature now, like um, artificial intelligence, uh, Internet of Things, definitely. Those are, I would say, uh, one or two maybe major uh, disruptive technology that are that are that that that, that will change uh, the the this landscape in, in, in which we are we are uh, doing our business. I would agree. Aya. Now we have a lot of projects, artificial intelligence and blockchain. Um, we have a lot of projects in smart cities and IoT technologies that take main role on this. So I think all of these technologies would be the main point, uh, the main uh, eye on, on the development of these projects now. But there are also every time new technologies, disruptive technologies coming. So it's always better to keep on all of this. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, in my view, I mean, the, the technology companies are pushing so hard to introduce new technologies and, and enhancements to existing ones. And uh, I think that virtually, literally speaking, uh, the technologies are faster than humans. <laughs> I think that's, that's a fact about the governmental officers and, and also the commercial organizations that adoption of those technologies and leveraging their, their performance is really under, on, under. So what I, I, I see in, uh, in our daily life is, is that uh, really we, we need uh, from decision makers quicker decisions and, and really use the existing ones. We are not waiting for the new ones because we are still not using mm -hmm. uh, the existing ones which are on the table maybe five, 10 years. A good example is, is blockchain, which is 40 years on the market. It's the traditional technology, traditional approach, and now it's the boom, but it, it is nothing new, right? We're just leveraging it in different ways. So I think that's, that's the way how we can really move forward the uh, um, country or the business we have. Just to a little bit add, I, 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 speaking from the telco industry perspective, we believe uh, that the 5G next generation mobile technology will drive a lot of disruption in the way we communicate and uh, in the way we connect not only people but also objects to, to the network. Uh, this is the general belief and we are in the process of testing and validating those hypotheses. So definitely a very important uh, a generation change for driving this digital transformation. But, you know, I would say we've seen and we've heard a lot of buzzwords. We continue to hear about artificial intelligence, about our argumented reality, about machine learning, about many different things. And I would claim that the most disruptive technology in our industry 
is the one when we find the right people that are able to use the technology for really a creating impact. So it can be any one of those if we find the way to commercially or technically use those technologies in a way that we drive that huge impact. And that goes back to having the right people, having the right talent, and leaving them in a, in a space where they can show their capabilities to use and take advantage of those new things for the better good of all of us. Thank you so much. It's really a nice uh, the end. <laughs> we started about technology and digital and ended, ended up with the people. It's all about people. Thank you very much. Uh, for being with us today and uh, now Vesna can close this.